Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the virtual college exploration session for all Illinois students. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, if you've never used Zoom webinar, just some things to keep in mind. Um, you will be able to ask questions with the Q&A button, um, and the panelists will be able to uh, respond either live or by typing back. Um, your camera will not be on, uh, nor will your microphone be, uh, but you can hear uh, myself and the panelists. Um, and if you're interested in attending more sessions, you can sign up for those at IACIC.org. And at the end of today, a recording of this session will be available and will be sent out to you, um, or you can access that at IACIC.org as well. But without any further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a nice day. It is nighttime in Bulgaria, so please excuse our lighting situation, but we're very excited to talk to you and I'm going to share our presentation now. And feel free to drop your questions into the uh, Q&A section. Um, my name's Samantha, I'm a counselor for AUBG. I've been working uh, in Bulgaria for two years for the university, and I'm originally from West Virginia, but I was actually born in Illinois, so it's kind of a weird transition to go from Illinois to West Virginia to Bulgaria. Um, today I have Ilda with me, who was a, also an admissions counselor and a former student, and she'll introduce herself. Hello, everybody. Um, nice to, well, <laughs> I cannot see you, <laughs> um, but nice. Um, it's really nice that you joined our um, presentation. My name is Ilda. I graduated UBG in 2019, and now I'm working for the university, and it will be my pleasure to um, show you more about the university and my experience there, and also answer to all of your questions. Uh, great. So um, this year we're having a new marketing campaign um, called Imagine. So I hope that you see throughout the presentation that all the pictures that you see are of actual students or professors and our campus. Um, we're trying to take a personalized approach. So here are six of our amazing current students and you're going to hear from them now. And let me know uh, in the Q&A section if the video goes funky. Ilda, can you still see the screen? Yep. The, the YouTube video? Uh, no, I can just see the presentation. Okay. Share. And we're going to Chrome. Okay, let's go. Yes. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. ABG has been a really, really quite a journey. I have definitely learned a lot. My view became wider. I didn't even know what my major is going to be, but then I just discovered that it can be many majors. Being around such a diverse community and having the chance to meet so many people has changed me for the better because the friends that I met along the way were actually the ones who shaped me to me. I gained a lot of confidence being here. I learned how to present myself, how to interact with people, how to maybe be tolerant to people with different backgrounds. We are seeing things from a different angle. We are still not settled. We want to find our place in the world. And if we don't really find our place, we are really eager to create an environment in which we can fit. And I think I've become a better person. I can't wait to find out how else I'm going to change. <laughs> I really hope that you can relate to uh, some of our students that you saw in the video and um, let us know if you want to be put in touch with one of them. Our student ambassadors are always free to do a webinar or to do a live campus tour with prospective students and their families. Um, at AUBG, we are a liberal arts university that's accredited in the US and the EU. And we are student-centered, um, and a lot of universities like to say this, um, and through my experience as an exchange student at AUBG and now a counselor, and maybe through Ilda's experience as a full-time student, uh, she can back me up here. Um, the students are centered throughout the application process and then all through their four years at AUBG, starting with receiving a personal admissions counselor, uh, me if you're from the US or the Americas, um, all the way until you walk 
uh, onto campus and you will get a resident assistant to help you and then you will get a faculty advisor to really uh, focus on you and your achievements and to help you plan all four years at AUPG so you can graduate with a dual diploma. So our diplomas are accredited in the United States as well as Europe. So it makes you a little more flexible, especially if you have dreams of traveling or you don't know quite yet and you don't know whether you're going to end up in Europe or another country or you know, go back to the US. Uh, you have the flexibility of having a dual diploma. And um, you're probably wondering at this point, well, what do you even offer? Glad you're wondering. We have 13 majors and 19 minors. We couldn't fit all the minors on this slide. It would look really funky. So um, a cool thing about liberal arts education or American style education is that, you know, you're going to be choosing your own majors. You're going to be choosing your own minors. And at AUBG, we don't charge extra. So if you want to double major and double minor, you'll be super busy, but it's possible and there's no extra charge for taking extra classes or anything like that. We do um, have a self-design major, meaning any of the minors you see on the screen and many more options are available to um, major in and that would be accredited in the US specifically. Um, so if you want to mix and match, you know, info systems with film studies, no problem, you'll just take more classes. Um, if you have any questions about these specific um, programs of study, you can drop it in the Q&A or email me afterwards, and we'll have a screen with my email, so don't worry. Um, beyond what you're going to study um, academically at AABG, you're going to get skills for the future, which some people call soft skills, some people call in-demand skills. It all is the same buzzword, but um, in reality, you need um, skills that, you know, go across the discipline, beyond the textbook, beyond the lecture, um, to help you do well in interviews, to help you work well with the teams, uh, help you network if you're running your own business. So ABG is uniquely, uh, uniquely designed to help you build these skills. Um, and you'll see throughout the rest of our uh, presentation, we might list some of these buzzwords, but really, um, you know, if you are a shy student who is studying literature or computer science, you're still going to have to practice some oral and written communication skills. You're still going to have to, you know, do some like problem solving with statistics and math. And this is just going to make you a more well-rounded employee, graduate student, or, you know, whatever you want to become. Uh, a great example of this is, you know, flexibility given the current situation. We're now all learning how to use Zoom together. Um, and these in-demand skills are great to have um, no matter where you end up. And I will let Ilda take over from here. Um, actually, thank you, Sam. Um, all the soft skills that Sam mentioned would not be acquired uh, easily if it wasn't for the personal attention that the professors give you. This is what this was one of my favorite parts um, of uh, studying in UBG. The professor knew my name. I they had office hours that I could go to. The classes were very small, so around 20 students uh, or less. Uh, and yeah, I, I really loved this part because the professor uh, knew my strengths and weaknesses and they, they could help me more into um, uh, strengthening my weaknesses and just, um, uh, yeah, thrive in, in academia and beyond. Uh, in the picture, in the slide, you can see Professor Laura Kelly. She's from the States and she's part of the Journalism Mass Communication Department. Um, a very dear professor to me <laughs> and uh, I, still, uh, I still remember all of her advice and all the guiding through. Um, and yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, besides the personal attention, it's worth mentioning that all our professors uh, come from various countries, from the States, uh, from EU, Bulgaria, but also even from other countries such as New Zealand, Turkey, Kosovo. And I think this is very important in a um, classroom environment because they bring different points of views and um, adding also the students are very diverse so the debates that you do in the classroom are very very interesting because you just broaden your horizon with all the uh, perspectives that you get um, 
And uh, as if the diversity in AUBG was not enough, <laughs> uh, we offer also exchange opportunities. I was the lucky student to have the opportunity to go to Prague in Czech Republic for one semester during my third year. And it was one of the best experiences ever because Prague is such a beautiful city. Um, Erasmus provided me with a monthly grant um, that I could use. And of course, I met people from all, all over the world and I took various classes that I couldn't take in a UBG. And I think for me that was um, very beneficial. Um, a UBG is partnering with 300 plus um, universities around Europe, US, but also as far as Japan, uh, um, South Korea or Sing Singapore. Um, and actually, Sam, uh, I don't know if you want to share more about how the exchange program in UBG um, affected you and your decision to come back. Yeah, so um, Ilda did the Erasmus program for her exchange and I did the ISEP program, which is most commonly associated with uh, the US. So US students and uh, other students from all around the world kind of swap places. And I just kind of randomly landed on AUBG and I spent a semester um, in, in the campus and uh, learning from the professors. And it was the first time I had ever been in such an international environment. My home university that I love dearly um, was Marshall University and they did have international students, but uh, not to the degree, of course, AUBG has. Um, and, you know, now, uh, five years later, um, living in Bulgaria and working for the university. So um, it's really a testament to uh, what ABG offers and part of community, which we'll get to later um, in the presentation. But now let's uh, kind of shift gears and uh, students that are watching, what do you want to do? Do you know? Um, do you have specific plans for the future? Are you wanting to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to work in an NGO? Um, keep all of these things in mind when you're searching for a university because it's going to help you make that decision um, to look ahead past the four years. Not that the four years are great. You'll have a, a wonderful time, but um, what do you want for your future? At AUBG, we prepare our students very well. Uh, I'd like to say 99.8% uh, of our graduates are employed or enrolled in a graduate school uh, within six months of leaving. And that 0.2% is a mix of students who just maybe want to take some time off from school to relax, especially if those students were doing like a double major, double minor and student clubs. I completely understand. And 11% um, of our graduates go on to become business owners or business partners. So co-owner maybe? Yeah. And here are some of the companies you can find ABG graduates in. And um, they're in offices in the US, in the UK, uh, they're all over the world. So uh, I hope some of these companies interest you and uh, excite you. A great thing about having uh, graduates and an alumni network that's in such a broad range of companies is that they provide our current students uh, mentorship through our uh, alumni mentorship program and more informally just through Facebook, WhatsApp, whatever they're using to communicate. And you can really reach out and know someone's gonna be on the other end. Um, Ubisoft uh, actually has an office based here in Sofia and they are, this uh, Sofia office of Ubisoft was in charge of the Assassin's Creed video games. I don't know if that's a relevant connection, but kind of cool. Um, beyond the career force, we have graduates that have gone on to really cool graduate schools. Uh, one of our 2019 graduates that you'll see later in the presentation is actually at Yale doing his PhD. We have two or three currently at Harvard Business School. Um, and I have one dear uh, Macedonian graduate, Simona, who uh, went to John Hopkins and now she's advising the Minister of Health of Macedonia uh, on you know, public policy for health. Um, and I got to meet her last year, so I'm kind of fangirling a little bit, but she's amazing. And you can find her interview on the website, um, Simona At Atanosova. I'm probably saying her Macedonian name wrong. Um, so no matter what you choose, uh, going straight into the career force and then grad school or grad school then the career or just career, ABG is going to set you up for success. Uh, one of our favorite examples to talk about is Elvin. And it's not just because he's also from Albania, like Elda. Um, he was one of our first graduates. So we started in 1991 at AEBG and he graduated in 96. So he was the 
second or third class. And um, he has a very interesting story. He has a video on our YouTube page if you want to check it out. But Elvin, um, beyond his list of accomplishments in the financial sector where he worked in London for six years as a financial analyst, um, has a really cool background. Uh, he is Albanian and was from Albania and was originally thinking of going to Italy to study. And he saw a long line um, at the Italian embassy and just decided to try AEBG instead. And since then, he is the founding president of the Alumni Association. He is on the board of trustees for AEBG and he's provided 250 students scholarships to come to AEBG. So he's just an amazing part of our community. Um, he comes to campus, he's involved with the alumni, he reaches out to even prospective students. And he just goes to show you um, how well ABG's prepared him for his business. Um, Empower Capital is like a wealth management group here in Sofia, that's amazing. And um, he's provided over $1 million in scholarships. Um, so yeah, he's great. And it just goes to show you how our community exists beyond your four years. It's going to continue with you um, as you build a career and connect back with your professors and do guest lectures and so much more. We recently did a community survey, um, which is something I'm very excited about coming from like an anthropology background. Um, the top three choices to describe AUBG from the survey, um, it was an open-ended question, describe AUBG in three words, and it was sent to uh, current students, past students, staff, and all of our professors, and diversity, community, and opportunity were the top three choices, which are such great words to describe any university, but uh, I really feel proud of it you know, being applied to AEBG. And Ilda, do you want to talk more about what happens in the community, uh, what our community does? Yeah, of course. That's, uh, that's the most fun part for me. Um, as I'm not from Bulgaria, the international environment, environment is actually one of the things that I will cherish the most about the UBG. Um, uh, in UBG, students come from around 40 countries, so we really love to celebrate diversity. And one of the biggest events is the International Week, where we have um, each day the, it's dedicated to a certain um, discipline like we have dance workshops or the alphabet learning language workshops and um, also uh, country presentations as well and it's uh, and all these events are concluded by uh, a bigger event on Sunday which is um, a lot of people a lot of the students dancing and wearing their traditional clothes and also there is um, stands with food um, that is prepared by our students, traditional food, very delicious, one of my favorite parts. <laughs> and in the picture is the student that um, Sam men mentioned, uh, Fook. He's from Vietnam and he actually goes to Yale. He's pursuing his PhD in math um, in Yale. And here he is showing off his uh, Vietnamese dances and costumes, which are super, super interesting. Um, and with, uh, with all this diverse student body, I, I can say like I was never ever bored in a UBG. There was always something going on. It's a very small school, but it's very vibrant, I can say. Um, I think you can find something that, uh, you can find the student club for every passion that you have, but you can also discover other passions by becoming part of a lot of uh, student clubs and we have clubs like um, the radio the newspapers uh, business club psychology club hiking uh, olympics which is about sports and i i don't know i i really wish i had time to name and talk about them all <laughs> i was part of the radio and also the documentary club and it was just um, both amazing especially the radio I love hosting shows, even though we didn't have a lot of listeners, but it was, um, it was very fun to just talk about the topics that you want and play the music that you wanted as well. And I was also resident assistant. Uh, I guess it's very important to just um, involve yourself in clubs rather than just um, staying in class. And of course, classes are important, academics are important, but 
also the extracurricular activities are super important as well because you're putting into practice what you're learning in class and an example of this is TEDx AUBG, another club uh, of AUBG and uh, also one of my favorites. Um, we host conferences each year and if you are brave enough, you can apply to be one of the student speakers. Um, or you can be part of the club and actually organize the events and find speakers um, that are from all over the world. And oh, another club oh, I really love to talk about is the AUBG Broadway Club. Um, they they organize the each year they um, take part. They organize a musical uh, from Broadway, and yeah, I think um, this is one of my favorite clubs also because it's one of the most hardworking ones. You can see uh, their work reflected in their in their final. Um, performances because they they do everything from the costumes uh, stage lighting and they also go around bulgaria in a tour and show off their skills so yeah if you're into arts and singing and dancing i would definitely um suggest you to join um there's also a lot of activities such as the international festivals a lot of conferences business conferences where you can actually uh, have your own business idea, gather a group of people, and if you win, uh, you actually get monetary support to start the business. And this is uh, thanks to the startup club in UBG. And also, a lot, uh, we do a lot of theater performances and um, also have guest lectures from professors from different universities. Who come to do to read their books or to just talk about the various topics, and all of these events have happened in our cute small <laughs> green campus, <laughs> um, very modern. Uh, I really like the um, the atmosphere that is around campus because um, you can find everything that you need. Uh, in the picture, you can see the Balkans, the academic center where uh, most of the classes um, uh, are uh, attended, uh, are given, sorry. Uh, and behind that, you can see the dorms where, um, no, you cannot see, <laughs> but <laughs> there are, the, you can see in, in the online tour on the website, or I can show you if you schedule um, an online tour with us. Um, but yeah, uh, the students stay in dorms and I think that's great. I really love staying in the dorms because um, I'm, I met a lot of friends there and there's also a lot of um, facilities um, such as um, sports facilities, there is a gym um, and also in the Balkansky Academic Center that I showed you before, we have the library on the other side, which is one of, uh, which is the biggest English uh, language library in the Balkans and it has over a thousand hundred publications and books either online or print version and also in the same building there is a Mac lab where all the Adobe packages are <laughs> and, uh, yeah since I am quite creative I, I love to uh, just go and take advantage of the Mac lab and uh, yeah so everything you need is, is on campus, really. Like uh, it's, it's very convenient to me because there's, a, as I mentioned a thousand times, there's a lot of things going on. So you don't really want to like um, have a super big campus where you have to move with buses and stuff. Everything you can do by bike or by foot. And I think that's great. It was great for me because it allowed me to have more time to actually attend and, and organize different um, events and activities. But yeah, if you do get bored by any chance, um, we have our small little city, Blagovgrad, uh, which Sam can talk about more. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Ilda, for telling us about campus and community activities. Uh, so yeah, if you do happen to venture off campus, we're right in Blagovgrad, which I will for here on call Blago for short. Um, it's a university town with less than 70,000 people approximately, and there's another university in Blago as well. So about one in every five people that you're going to see are act is actually a current uh, university student, either with AABG or with the other university in town. Um, here is an actual picture from the city center. It's uh, not, you know, fake. Uh, there is a cafe and restaurant right here in the picture and surrounding uh, campus and all in the center of the city, which is only a 10 minute walk, eight minutes if you're a speed walker. Uh, are so many restaurants. There's nightlife in Blago. There's a movie theater. There are, there's go-karting right outside of uh, the city, like limit which is really cool. I have not tried it yet. Um, and there's just plenty to do in town. We're also really well located in Bulgaria. Um, there, uh, the campus in, in Blago, which is in southern Bulgaria, which is super close to the Greek border, so you can go to Thessaloniki. It's only one hour drive away from the, uh, Sofia, which is the capital city of Bulgaria, and I live there. Uh, so you can fly into the international airport and catch one of the hourly buses that goes to Blago. I take the bus uh, every week to get to work and I never have issues, it's really nice. And there's also a train. And um, of course, we're really close to ski slopes in Vansko. If winter is your season, then come to AUBG and go to Vansko on the weekends. Um, beyond this little part of the city um, is surrounded by mountains and a really nice uh, like farmland. Um, this is the Rilla Mountains and it, tucked away into the mountains is the Rilla Monastery. Every year um, in the fall, we take the first year students and uh, international students, especially, to the Rilla Monastery to see, uh, to see it. It's really, really beautiful um, and it's surrounded by nature and woods. So um, I went when I was on an exchange. Ilda, have you been? I think you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I love hiking. I have, I've been in seven Rilla Lakes. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the lakes. There are uh, really picturesque uh, seven lakes on the Rilla Mountains that you have to kind of hike to. I have not done it because I'm not much of a hiker. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, but beyond nature, we'll yeah, we'll have to. If you want to kind of go beyond nature, it's not your scene either. Uh, come visit me in Sofia. Uh, the capital city is amazing. Um, Ilda likes to describe it as a mix of young and new, uh, old and new. The buildings are from all different eras and history. Some of them are rebuilt after like bombings. So there's really cool history if you're into that. Um, linguistics are, are kind of weird in Sofia. I mean, you have Bulgarian and you have Albanian and I hear French and German and English all around me every day. Uh, it's a really dynamic city to live in. Um, there's great public transportation. I come from a state with no public transportation, so I always really love talking about it. The metro is so fast, so clean, and always on time. Um, this is actually a picture of one of my favorite spots to visit uh, on a lazy weekend. Uh, it's the National Theater. And right beyond this theater, like if you were walking away from the picture, is this beautiful park with uh, sculptures surrounding the park and a fountain. and Every time I've been, there has been a, a group of old men playing music, but they're like super talented musicians and they're just hanging out playing music and there's an ice cream stand. And there are so many spots like this in Sofia. Uh, it's a really green city. There are a lot of uh, like eco buses and also a lot of parks. Some of them are dog parks. Uh, some of them are just for people. And there's actually uh, the old King's Garden is available to the public now. So you can go through it and um, it's just an amazing city. And I really hope that you get a chance to visit, um, especially if you become an AABG student. And um, how do you become an AABG student? Uh, you just complete our online application form. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. Uh, we have a checklist here, but don't worry about memorizing it. Just email me if you're confused or check our website if you want the steps. If you are a native English speaker, you do not have to submit English proficiency test results we're not gonna make you take the TOEFL. Don't worry about it, we'll waive it. Um, a cool thing about our interview process is that we do interview all of our applicants. 
Um, and it's just to get to know you better, to connect with you, to see your motivations to come, and to provide you an opportunity to talk to us about what's on your mind for the university search. So uh, that's one thing all of the admissions counselors really love to do. We do so many interviews every year, but they're amazing. We get to meet and talk to so many students from all around the world. And we accept FAFSA if you want to apply for need-based aid. The deadline to keep in mind is just March 1. Um, you'll get better scholarship offer. And let's look a little bit at cost. These numbers are from College Board, except for our number, which our uh, average tuition for not the 2019 cycle that College Board is currently reporting, but for the students that just started in August, um, their average tuition and cost were $7,250 and $3,000 for housing, including food and books. Um, so you can see that, you know, ABG is a really wise investment if you are looking to study abroad at a private American uh, university with top-notch education. And we have a really cool campus and a really cool country surrounding the campus. So I really hope uh, I can talk to you more about that. And we do offer financial support. You can apply, well, you, as soon as you submit your application, we automatically consider you for any eligible scholarships we offer, and you can get up to 30% off your tuition. Amazing students do qualify for the ABG Distinguished Scholarship, which is 100% off tuition. And then you can apply for financial aid through our form or with FESPA and receive up to 20% off. And if you just apply by March 1, guys, it's 10% off tuition automatically just by applying by March 1. It's amazing. And thanks to the generosity of our former students and our community here and all around the world, we have lots of donor scholarships also listed on our website. And you don't have to do anything extra to apply for those. Just submit your application and we will automatically uh, let the donors know who qualifies for what. And here's how you get in touch with me and Ilda. Well, me. Ilda, they, I'll put them in touch with you. Uh, we have a great marketing team and a social media team at AUG. Please feel free to DM them, uh, tweet them, find them on Facebook. Uh, we work with them every day and they would love to talk to you more about campus as well. So if you are more comfortable on social media versus email, use that channel. And I'd like to mention that all of our student clubs have their own Instagram accounts. So you can find those by also following the main abg dot underscore edu account. So thank you for listening. Uh, Ilda, thank you so much for joining me and providing your input as a student or, or a former student alumni now. Thank you to all the students who, attend, who attended it. And I hope to see you on campus in August 2021. <laughs> yeah. Um, if any of the people in attendance have any questions, the Q&A feature can be located um, on Zoom at on my screen, it's the bottom of the screen in the gray bar. So we're happy to talk to you about anything from majors and minors to life in Bulgaria, to airports to use, uh, whatever you need to know. Okay, while we wait for those questions, Ilda, I will ask you, uh, about your experience as a resident assistant. Uh, what was that like? What did you do? Well, um, I was staying in the front desk and assisting students if they needed. For example, in the front desk, we had a lot of board games and um, also the irons, vacuum cleaners, and anything that the students needed. And also the keys to the party room, keys to the kitchen, so that they could use. So we were responsible for that. And at the same time, um, we were responsible for um, after 11 <laughs> to go around and make sure that everything is good and make sure that um, there's not a lot of noise going on. Um, but for me, it was it was a very fun experience because the team was was super super helpful, and they're still my friends to to this day. And yeah, I, I really loved especially our team buildings um, because our hall director used to make us hi go hiking, <laughs> and some of the hikes like they were not even team buildings like we didn't 
build the team. <laughs> we were super tired, but I, I do think that uh, deep down the, the pain um, made us be um, more, you know, the pain bonded us more <laughs> than some icebreakers would have. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really, I will always, one scenario, always scenario. <laughs> Oh. Uh, we have three residence halls on campus, Scapto 1, 2, and 3, 3 being the newest. Um, but is it true in your experience that Scapto 1 is the loudest? Yeah, I was <laughs> in Scapto 2. Scapto 2 is the best. But I mean, the Scapto 1 is the biggest one, so I think it makes sense that it's the loudest. That's an unfair judgment to say that the students that pick Skepta 1 are the lottery students. Because I was also yeah. in Skepta 2, and there is a little bit of a rivalry on campus um, <laughs> for some of the Skeptos a little bit, or at least when I was an exchange student. So it's a really fun place to be. Um, and it's an American experience. You get a small university with less than a thousand students. You live on campus. You bond. You get a class together. Uh, you travel together. So it's really amazing. And I hope you guys get to come and see it. We also are available for online guided tours that Ilda mentioned earlier through Zoom, um, but we do in-person tours as well if you happen to be in Eastern Europe, stop by. Yep. Okay, we don't have any questions, so thank you everyone. Thank you. All right, and that concludes our session for today. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to our panelists uh, for taking time to present today. Um, just a couple of things as we finish up. After you close out, um, there will be a quick survey if you wouldn't mind filling that out um, so that we can receive some feedback. That'd be awesome. Um, you can, again, sign up for more sessions at IACAC.org, and a recording will be available for you on that very same website. All right, thank you everybody. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs> Sam. <laughs>